Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day you're watching this, I'm glad you're here. My name is Connor Forbes and I serve as the vicar here at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. And I am eager to continue our series, our study on Jonah. Today we're looking at Jonah chapter 3. This takes place after the great fish spit up Jonah, after Jonah repented, and he goes to Nineveh. And again, just like Jonah chapter 2 with Jonah's prayer, in Jonah chapter 3, we get some of the purest gospel, the gospel in the sense of God's mercy and grace ever, and it takes place here in the Old Testament. We're going to read about that and more. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today and tomorrow, we're going to be doing a new song. I really want you to learn it. Uh, it's called Nineveh, and it's by a woman named Brooke uh, Liked Word. I'm sorry I butchered her name. Uh, she sometimes sings for Hillsong, uh, but don't let that get in your way. It's a beautiful song about Nineveh, taken from the story of Jonah. So let's learn it together. I encourage you, look it up on YouTube. She does it way better than I do. <laughs> and then we'll sing it again tomorrow as well.
Our scripture reading for today is taken from Jonah chapter 3. And actually, before I read, I wanted to highlight, I didn't do this at the beginning, but I'm in the early childhood wing here at Mount Calvary. Uh, I very rarely come here, so I thought, hey, why not do a devotion? So that's where we are. And what's even cool, the history of this place, this was your old sanctuary. Uh, and so God, we we're in God's house. I mean, even though this is still the early childhood wing, we're in God's house. Anyway, Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger, so that we may not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I mentioned earlier, this takes place in the Old Testament. And ask yourself for a minute, reflect maybe with those around you if you're watching with a group, or reflect in the comments. How do you typically view the God of the Old Testament? Because I don't think we often think of him this way. We don't jump to Jonah as our example of the Old Testament God. But the reality is, God is the same today through his son Jesus Christ, just as he was for the people of Nineveh, just as he was in the Garden of Eden. And he's going to be that way forever and always. He is a God who wants to relent from disaster. And I love what Jonah does. He goes into the city and says, turn from your evil ways, or as we might know the word, repent if you don't repent, in 40 days you'll be destroyed. And so what do the people do? Well, the people put on sackcloth. They repent. They tell God, we're sorry for doing this great evil. And then the word eventually reaches the king, the Gentile king. And what does the king do? Well, he joins the people. He puts on sackcloth and he sits in ashes. And I love the last line of his command to the people. He says, who knows? God may turn and relent, turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. I love that. Because God, I can just picture him smiling in heaven and saying, yes, I am happy to relent from my anger. Because verse 10 says, God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster he promised was coming. God relented. This is the God who has been, who is, and who will be. A God who wants you to turn from your evil ways so he can relent from his disaster. We see this through Jesus. Again, Jesus on the cross yesterday identified him as the greater Jonah. Jesus in the belly of the earth for three days. Jesus being the greater Jonah is the God who comes to you and says, Turn back to me so I can forgive you. So I can relent from the disaster that is coming. 
Because the reality is, when Jesus returns, those who do not repent, those who do not turn from their evil ways and look to God, are out of chances. When Jesus returns, those who don't believe are going to a disaster far greater than Nineveh could ever have imagined. Greater than Sodom and Gomorrah. It is an eternal punishment in the deepest pits of hell. But Jesus says, turn from your evil ways, turn to me, repent, and live with me forever. The minute someone does that, the minute, some, the second someone turns from their evil ways, just like the Gentile city of Nineveh, God relents from disaster. Out of an abundance of mercy, he says, you are forgiven. That's the lesson of Nineveh. All we have to do as fallen sinners is say, God, I'm sorry, I want to turn toward you. And God relents and forgives. Let's close in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. I'll see you guys tomorrow as we close out Jonah.